Greetings Internet, my name is Chris and this is my guide for the collectible achievement in the Morrowind DLC known as Ancestral Tombs Hunter. Um, and it's an achievement that requires you to collect 30 different uh, tombstone rubbings uh, and then hand them in to the guy we're about to visit. So the first thing you should usually do, uh, it's not necessary to actually pick up all the rubbings, uh, but it will be necessary later on, is uh, start the quest. So just like with um, Lithania Blood, uh, what's the, uh, the the one in Orsinium as well, Rothgar Relic Hunter, just like those two, uh, this achievement has an intro quest. And you can find this intro quest in the library of Vivek, and you can see this is the map of Vivek City. It's all the way in the south of Morrowind, um, and it's right here on the lower level of this uh, canton here. Uh, I just want to say before going, um, I am on the PTS right now, uh, but I do not have any uh, watermarks on my screen uh, because I've been allowed to show content from uh, the PTS. You see here in the middle we have a model right now it has nothing but the volcano on it to the library of vivek and be welcome if you seek knowledge perhaps we can come to a suitable arrangement i'm actually just gonna activate subtitles this is the guy that gives you the quest a librarian called brayden well have you come to see our wonder in miniature our magnificent tribute to morrowind alas the work is not yet complete and, the truth be told, there is more to our miniature Vardenfell than simply a representation of our land at a reduced scale. Indeed. And once complete, it will point us to the location of the Lost Library of Anduul, the secret repository of the knowledge of the Great Houses. I just need someone to help me handle the legwork, as it were. Well, that's the rub. Literally. The ancient families of Vardenfell hid the location of the library and then placed clues to find it at their ancestral tombs. I need someone to take rubbings of these clues. Will you help me solve this mystery? Excellent. Let's start with a simple one. Head north of Vivek and travel to the Orthrellus ancestral tomb. Look for a stone plaque near the tomb and take a rubbing of the words inscribed upon it. Return to me with the rubbing and, well... You'll see. Every important. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna skip that. Uh, if you look over here behind him, there's a. No, I don't want to talk to you again. Excellent. Uh, there's a book called Ancestral Tombs of Wardenfell. Uh, and there's also a list somewhere, if I can find it. It's kind of hard finding the list. Uh, actually, it might not be here. Uh, I might have to do this first before it shows up. Uh, but yeah, so he's gonna send us to one of the ancestral tombs. And just like with uh, Rothgar Relic Hunter and Orsinium, uh, it's not very hard to find. Um, when I'm getting to all 30 uh, tombs and I'm going to show you all the locations, I'm going to go according to this uh, achievement. So the number one would be the Saren and the number 30th would be Favela. Um, the one we're about to get is Orthrellis, which is number 13. Uh, so let's just go and get that. And as you can see, it's just outside of Vivek City. Okay, you can see we're coming up to the Orphorellis uh, Ancestral Tomb. And this is exactly what all the tombs are gonna look like. You see, you just go up to it and then you press E, take the rubbing. You're gonna rub so hard. <laughs> and now we just go back. <laughs> Uh, okay, back at the library now. We just go talk to him real quick. Uh, something you should note is that, well, I might as well just show it now. Well done. Yes, yes. Uh, so right now, this is what the uh, scale looks like um, before we've added any of the rubbings. But now, after we talk to him, it's gonna add a, a part to it. I assume you found the tomb without too much trouble. Were you able to take the rubbing as I directed? The model of Vardenfell progresses nicely, but we still have a long way to go to fill in all the notable landmarks and uncover the location of the lost library of Anduul. 
This is perfect. Now, prepare yourself. What happens next will be simply amazing. Thanks to magic provided by Lord Vivek, I can use this rubbing to not only record the clue provided by the tomb, I can add a new section to our model of the land. So you can see right down here, it's now added uh, the part that contains uh, Vivek City. And right here is where we found the tomb. The model of Vardenfell progresses nice. My research indicates that 30 of our most revered families each left a clue to the location of the Library of Andor. Find the remaining 29 tombs, take rubbings, and before long, our model will be complete and the location revealed. Okay, now there should be... Yeah, here it is. So these are uh, all the tombs. This is obviously an... Um, alphabetical order we're not gonna go according to this we're gonna go according to the uh, achievement list because that just makes it easier because uh, we you know we we don't get uh, an item like you do with uh, the Osinium Rothgar relic hunter where you get the entire scroll uh, another thing to note is there there's no uh, there's no clues or anything so you kind of just have to look everywhere the, the things I can tell you is that you know all the all the tombs are out in the open. All right, so we're gonna start up uh, way north, uh, north uh, west to be precise, uh, north of a city called uh, Nisus or Gnisus. I don't, I'm not really sure how that's supposed to be pronounced, whether or not the G is silent or not. Uh, but the first one should be right up here. Um, and to get up there, we can actually utilize one of the new features with uh, um, with, with Morrowind here, which is the Silt Striders. So we're just quickly going to go find one of the Silt Striders and make it take us there. Oh, sorry, you can just see it's right here. It's marked by a. Uh, it's marked by an anchor. And then we just talk to the caravan. Get on or get moving. I don't and we say, take us to a distant settlement. Nicest. The reason why we're starting all the way up north is because the first one will be here, the second one will be here, third one here, and then so on. And all of them move basically down alongside the coast, and then end up here, which uh, means that this is the most optimal route that I'm gonna show you. All right, so we're gonna go up north to that one first. All right, um, I just found this uh, way shrine here. It's called Orshilkel, fuck, Orshilaku Camp Way Shrine, <laughs> and. Uh, it, it's gonna be right over here. So you see right here, Saren, and that's the first one. If you look at the map, this is exactly where it is, right at the end of this uh, little road here. And we just press E, take the rubbing again, this is where it is. Next one is down here. Okay, uh, you can see the next one right here, as I showed you. We have uh, Nysus down here, and it's up by this little Y fork in the road. And it's the second one, Guinness. See, so far we have both uh, both the two first ones. Um, they won't be ticked off until you hand them off to the uh, librarian, so just keep that in mind. The next one is right on this little outcropping here. Okay, you can see we're coming up to it here. Oh, that was actually spot on. Uh, so yeah, this is where it is, right on the list, this little outcropping. Just actually exactly south of the first one we found. And this is the third one. Rathendus. 
The next one is, let's see, it's down here by a way shrine. Okay, you can see we're right next to the way shrine called uh, the West Gash, and it's uh, just west of Ulara. And this is the Salothran Ancestral Tomb. Again, as I mentioned earlier, we're just going down the coast, so we're just gonna keep going down. The next one is pretty much like straight south of us, uh, down here. Okay, this is, uh, I think, what, number five at this point? You see this is exactly where it is, south of the previous one. It's called uh, Telvane. Let's see, Telvane. It's number five. Uh, next one is a little bit further away. It's inside this little crater here, um, which is actually where a world boss is. All right, this is uh, number six. You can see it's near. Uh, the world boss that's called uh, Nil Nilthog's Hollow. You can see it's inside this crater just uh, north of Balmora. And it's the Uviran Ancestral Tomb. Uh, I will make sure to add, uh, what's it called, um, timestamps for each of these in the description. Okay, the next one is over here. Just need to find my way out of here. Okay, this is number seven. I was a little bit off. It's kind of hard. I'm, I'm, my reference photo is uh, very small. But you see it's right here, next to this little pool of water, next to this uh, square object building thing. And it's the uh, Norvayan. Uh, next is number eight, and it's just right inside, or just outside actually, uh, Belmora, right there. You can see uh, from here, there's actually another Silt Strider station. Um, they're massive, by the way, the Silt Striders. Pretty cool. But yeah, this is uh, number eight, the Theris. And again, this is where it is. You have the uh, tower right here, you have the stables, and it's this little thing. It's very easy to find once you're actually looking on the Balmora map. You also have your way shrine over here. Uh, let's see, number nine is, uh, that is hard to see, uh, right down here, I think. Yeah, more or less. Ah, yeah, I was close. Yeah, so this is where it is. There's a camp up here. There's an island right here that looks like a giant crab of some sort. You see you have Balmora over here. And this is uh, number nine, it's Heron. Uh, we're actually gonna go to number 11 next, just because it's closer. It's right here. Because uh, number 10 is up here. So we're just gonna go this way and then up. Okay, this is uh, number 11. It's the uh, Thelas Ancestral Tomb. You can see it's uh, straight west of the Sedanine Way Shrine. You see we have Sedanine here. This is Vivek City. Right here. Thelas. And this was number 11. We're gonna go to number 10 next. And number 10 is right up here. There are going to be a few of the ancestral tombs we're going to go in a different order just because some of them are a little bit off the beaten track. So uh, this is the most optimized route I'm showing you right now. Okay, this is number 10. I was a little bit off with the marker. Uh, it's south of the Vasir uh, Didanat mine, south of Balmora, north of Sedanin. And it's the Lelaren. Next, we're going to go to number 12, which is right up here. 
and that's uh, north of Vex City. Okay, this is number 12. You can see we have uh, Fuyata Quarry up north. There's actually a house you can buy down here, I think. And this is number 12. Yep. Serrano. So we're nearing halfway. Nearing halfway. Not bad. Um, we already got 13 because that was the Ofrella's tomb that we got down here. So next up, we're actually, so we're going to skip number 14 because number 14 is uh, way up here. Uh, we'll get that later on. Um, 15 is all the way over here. And we have 16 and so on. So um, again, as I said earlier, this is the most optimized um, route I'm showing you. Okay, this is number 15. It's a little bit off with the marker. It's uh, straight east of the Suran uh, uh, marker. So straight east. See north of all these itty bitty islands. This is number 15. It's Veles. And then 16 is on one of these small islands here. Uh, let's see, it's this one. Yes. This is number 16, Relith, on a small island. So actually, something uh, I forgot to mention, if you read these uh, inscriptions here, uh, it's actually uh, Daedric for what the tomb is called. So that would be R-E-L-E-T-H. Uh, and this actually does come into play later, uh, sort of. Alright, number 17 is up here. Boop. Okay, this is number 17. There's actually an NPC here. Uh, you can interact with her though, but yeah. This is uh, straight west of Molagmar. You can see it's right by this little weird divot in the road. It's uh, Braviro, and this was uh, number 17. So we're over halfway, by the way, I would like to point out. Uh, 18 is down here. There's like, I think, four pixels on the map I'm oh, looking at. Uh, and this is a map I made myself um, prior to this. Since because of the... Uh, NDA that has been in place. I haven't been able to make a video earlier. Alright, here it is. Where's my bear? Okay, the bear is like... I don't even know where he is. Okay, uh, this is uh, number 18. Uh, a little bit wrong. Uh, south of Molagmore. And there's a way shrine over here, Molagmar way shrine, north of these weird ruins. Number 18, Radus. Now we're gonna go to the very south, and this is number 19. Okay, number 19, Arano. It's uh, all the way south, as I said, straight south of the uh, Tel Brenora uh, way shrine. I think. Uh, the only place you can get more south or further south is in Vivek City, more or less. And Arano, okay. Uh, by the way, the map that I talked about, uh, I will leave a link to it in the description uh, to the forum post I made. Okay, let's see, it's over here. This is number 20 we're going to next. Okay, this is number 20. I was a little bit off. Uh, south of the Holomayan, Holomayan, Holomayan. I don't know. One of those two words. Uh, south of the Holomayan monastery and north of the shrine of Asura. This is where. Yes. Next up, we're gonna go to uh, 22. The reason why we're skipping 21 is because 21 is all the way over here. Uh, 22 is pretty much straight north. It's, let's see, it's right here. 
Okay, this is the 22. I was a little bit wrong. Uh, it's north of the Holomayan Monastery and south of Sadrith uh, Mora. If I zoom out a little bit, you can see where we are. The previous one we got was, uh, where was it? It was like right here. It's 22, Aranum. Next one is uh, 25. Like, we're going uh, way out of order, but uh, as I said, this is the most optimal route. Uh, let me see, let me see. I think it's right here. Yep. A little bit off. So many pets. Okay. So right here. This is where we got the previous one. It's up here. East of uh, Drelith Ancestral Tomb. And it's the uh, Varyl Nim. And this was number 25. Now we're going to go backwards a little bit. And get uh, first 24. And then after 24 we're going to get 21. Uh, let's see, 24 is right here. Also, uh, the reason why I'm going according to the uh, achievement list is because it seems very much like uh, all the placements were done according to the achievement list, if that makes sense. Because, uh, you know, if you've noticed, we've been going in order from number one up here, and then now we're, what, 24 down here. So it's like increasing in numbers as it goes down along the coast. That was also something that... Uh, greatly helped in, in finding these, because you don't have any clues uh, as, as to where they are, so uh, that did kind of help, since you didn't have you know any clues at all. I will say though, I, I think I've probably seen every single piece of this map several times looking for all of these things. It's not like they're super hard to find, uh, but they're still, you know, kind of hard. There were certainly some of them that I had a really, really hard time finding. All right, here we go. A little bit off with the marker. I think someone's following us. Okay. So this is uh, 24. It is east or west of the Halls of Fabrication and east of the Messier Datalit Egg Mine, which is a world boss. You see we have Sadrith Moor over here, and we have uh, Molagmar down south. And this is 24. And this. 21 is the next one, which is down here. Okay, 21, right here. Uh, east of the Nechug... Uh, oh my goodness, I... I don't know how to say that. So, east of the uh, the, the Dwemer uh, public dungeon way shrine. Uh, let's let's say it like that. How the hell do you pronounce that? Uh, anyway, south of the uh, Messier Dadalit uh, world boss. And this is 21. It's the Marin ancestral tomb. Next, we're going to go for 23. Which is over here. Uh, one thing uh, I would like to point out is that compared to the three other collectible achievements uh, in the game, I think this one is probably the second easiest. The easiest being uh, the uh, cut purse above from Thieves Guild. But I think uh, Rothgar Relic Hunter and um, and the uh, Lithania Blood were pretty hard. Um, Rothgar Relic Hunter was probably the hardest one, just because the items you had to find were in all of the zone, inside and outside, and, you know, the hints were pretty vague and sometimes wrong. Alright, so this is uh, 23 Serenote. It's a little further in than I put it. It's uh, north of Suran. You can see there's all the lava here. Little settlement here. I think this is the Dwemer settlement and one as well here. And this is the public dungeon. 
the Dwarven Republic dungeon. Serano, okay. Uh, some of these do have very, very similar names. Okay, next one is number 14 that we skipped earlier. It's right down here. Okay, number 14. Right here. You can see the previous one we got was right up here, I think. Yeah, right here. Again, north of Saran. There's the lake to the uh, west. And this is the Aran Ancestral Tomb. Uh, now we're gonna go pretty far and we're gonna get the 27. So we're skipping 26. 26 is over here, but we're gonna get 27 first. And it is right about here. And it's, uh, you can see it's uh, right north of Sadrith Moor. Well, actually, if you look at the map over here, you can actually see right here. Oh, that's nice. So that's a little bit more accurate. Okay. Oh. Uh, so I think, uh, in terms of time that this will take uh, to collect, I think this one is about the same time uh, spent as uh, Rothgar Relic Hunter. Uh, the zone is a lot bigger than Orsinium, at least it feels a lot bigger. Uh, but it, you know, it's also longer. You can see it's like this entire thing. You can't go through the middle as you can with uh, some of Orsinium and or Rothgar, I mean. And uh, Rothgar also, you know, has a lot of its items inside. You know, like uh, the Hammer of Glass, for example, in the Rothgar Relic Hunter. You know, it takes 15 minutes to get to it just because you have to do the the public dungeon quest. Uh, but this one, you know, all of them are out in the open, and it takes about the same amount of time to get all of them. And there's 30 to collect, so you know, not bad compared to Lithania Blood and uh, a cut purse above that take about one to two hours to get, depending on how fast you are and how many other people are there. Especially Lithania Blood, that can be really annoying if you know you're competing for the kills with a lot of other people. Okay, this is uh, 27. Again, you can see right here on the map, there's this little thing, just like there was in Belmora. This is 27 uh, Satrion. Now we're gonna go get uh, 26, and let's see, it is here, I think. Okay, this is uh, 26. I was a little bit off. It is south of Polk and uh, north northeast of Falansaur Ruins. And you can see we have Satrith Moor over here. The previous one we got was right here. So it's almost a straight uh, west uh, line you go. Oh, well, yeah, whatever. Um, and this is 26. And that, I think that's an L, right? Leneth or Eoneth? One of those two names. Uh, actually, it might be an E. Yeah, it's so it's Eoneth. Because it's capital, so it would be... Yes, it's an I. Sorry, not an E, and I is what I meant to say. Okay, uh, 28 is up here. And we're coming to completion very shortly. So we just need three more. 28, 29, and 30. Um, I think this uh, collectible achievement, in terms of the ones I enjoy, I think the collection part of, uh, of uh, this one, the Ancestral Tombs Hunter, is probably my least favorite of the four, but the quest that you get afterwards is probably the best follow-up quest of all four uh, collectible achievements in the game so far. Because um, it, it's a really nice quest you get after this. I, I think it's better than Rothgar's uh, uh, follow-up quest at the end. Did I miss it? I think I... Yeah, I moved past it. Talking. Uh, I might be down here, man. Hold on. Oh, sorry. It's down here. I placed it in the wrong spot. But yeah, as I said, there's like four pixels on this map, because I got it up on my very old phone. Uh... Dear lord. Oh, here it is. Okay, 
this is 28. See right here. It is north of uh, Synap Camp and east of Duptil Alar Tower, south of Telmora. And we've got another unpronounceable name over here. Uh, and it's Venom. And rub, rub, rub. Oh yeah, you might be able to see, by the way, I've got the inverse kinetics going on, so the character sort of, you know, the, the legs uh, adjust to the terrain. It's still kind of wonky when you're going up slopes. You can see the character's like almost tipping backwards. But it's pretty cool when you're standing still, at least. Oh, sorry. Let's see, the next one, 29, is... Uh, should be up here. That is very hard to see. Okay. We'll find out when we get close. Oh man, that is very laggy. I don't know why. If I look this direction... What is... What's in this direction? I'm getting 22 frames if I look this way. And then like... 40, 50 if I look this way. Yeah, that's pretty dumb. Uh, okay, this is uh, 29. I was a little bit off on the marker. We have uh, Telmora over here. And we have the unpronounceable thing down south. We have some big ass runes uh, up north. And this is uh, 29 Nerano. I might have said 28 Nerano. Okay, we're coming to the last one. Uh, I did say this was about the same amount of time as Rothgar Relic Hunter, but it's actually faster because we're about to get the very last one and I've only been going for 45 minutes. Let's see, the last one is up here. Yeah, so I've only been going for 45 minutes at this point. That's pretty good. So you can definitely do this one uh, pretty pretty quickly, if you know where they all are. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, I'm not sure what's going on with the frames. It, they're really low when I look towards uh, Telmora for some reason. I do think the game needs some more optimization because on live it also doesn't run that well. At least not for me. I'm not sure about other people. Alright, this is the last one. This is uh, Favel. Ancestral Tomb. We can't amount right now. What? Okay, we should have all of them, I hope. I kind of don't want to have to run out and find one or two because I missed them. Like, I'm pretty sure we got all of them. I followed the map to to uh, every single point. I'll also, so as I said, I'll leave a link to the, the map that I followed. Okay. Now we just go back to Vivex City. Uh, and this is the point where you can decide whether or not you want to keep watching or if you want to uh, just do the rest on your own. So there's going to be a quest. I'm going to do the quest as well. Uh, there are two puzzles in this quest. Uh, if you don't want the solution spoiled for you, uh, well done, you can well you done. can just, you know, leave the video here or whatever. Alright, so now we just uh, hand in all the rubbings <laughs> to uh, to the librarian. As you oh yeah, and, and take, take note of the map right now. And then after we speak to him. Just gonna skip through this. Wonderful. Stunned. There's the achievement. Ancestral well done, tombs. Well done. Hunter. That's all of them. Now we're a librarian. And now you can see this is the entire uh, scale model, but there's a missing piece right here. Yeah. I wonder what that could be. Probably the missing library, right? So this is the quest that. Uh, I'm also going to do it, so I'm going to show you the solution to two Our puzzles. miniature model is nearly complete, my friend. All that remains is a single component, and that's the key to everything. Indubitably, thanks to your efforts, every rubbing you brought back not only helped complete the model, but it also provided another clue as to the location of the lost library. What isn't present is the key. That gap in the model, that's where we'll find the lost library of Anduul. Once you go and locate the exact spot, we can start examining the records related to our earliest Velothi settlers. What do you say? Ready for one more adventure? 
Okay. Uh, now you can see this up here is the spot where we were, uh, you know, where the missing piece is. You can also see it actually, it's shown on the map. It would be kind of cool if they hadn't, uh, you know, actually specifically pointed out the spot on the map. So you would have to go locate it yourself. But whatever. Still kind of cool. Alright, let's go get it. Something that's kind of funny, by the way. Uh, when I was uh, finding all the ancestral tombs, I found the entrance to the lost library. Because when you find it, it looks just like a ancestral tomb just without you know the stone in front of the door and uh if you you know try and interact with the door it says lost library of andul or something like that which is you know kind of funny uh you know just finding it while it was halfway through you know collecting all the rubbings let's see it's right here enter the lost library i will all right Hmm, something wrong with the map. Herein lies the uh, knowledge of the great houses of the Hive of Lofty Culture. Might the bracers of knowledge and wisdom before amendments can be gained. In darkness, the words of Andu yield to no mare. Uh, trust in the prophet Veloth. Follow the path tiles from Somerset to Exodus to Marwen. And like the Velothi, uh, you will find what you seek. It's like flawless uh, pronunciation of all those, um, all those words. <laughs> Alright, so you can see right here, there are four tiles on the floor. Um... I don't remember. This is an E, so that much I know. I think this is an M. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, so these four tiles are very important. There's a room right here. Uh, if you stand on the wrong one, it teleports you back to the entrance. And what we have to do is we have to light uh, two braciers. See right there. And we have to follow these tiles. So, let's see. I think there's... aren't they supposed to light up when you step on them? Uh, maybe not. It's fairly simple, but yeah, if you... Obviously, if you don't realize that from the start, uh, it can be kind of confusing. And this is the first bracer, this is the bracer of knowledge. Boop. Let me just follow the path back. M, E, I wonder if that's an R, maybe. Someone can probably tell me. Because then it would spell uh, Mare, right? Which is one of the hints in the... in the text we just read. Okay, that opens the door over here. You see now, stepping on them doesn't teleport you back. Uh, okay, so... This is the second puzzle. There are wards on these things. You see, they teleport you out. And you have to clear a puzzle with uh, these ancestor spirits. So you see, this one is Dress, ancestor spirit. We find the uh, Understanding House Dress. Uh, they are isolationists. Uh, they've resisted to uh, to join the Dunmer Society with the rest of Tamriel. Um, so basically, these are all hints that you have to follow. So they're agrarian, they're isolationist. Uh, there's no voiceover for this guy. Uh, only those with the understand, uh, only those who understand the value and thinking of how stress may enter this vault of knowledge. And then he says, uh, House Drez holds the ancient tradition of Daedra and ancestor worship, as well as the cherished uh, institution of what economic system? Uh, and they're agrarian, which, uh, let's see, I, I went with slavery, uh, crucial to agricultural. Uh, and they were isolationists. Uh, keep themselves and focusing. So it's uh, two, three, and one uh, are the choices I made. 
And then you can see you get the dress genealogy. The next one is House Inderil. Political powerhouse, uh, religion. I'm just looking for you know keywords. Uh, culture must be preserved at all costs. Uh, they don't see outsiders and non Dunmer as inherently evil and dangerous. Okay, that should probably be what we need. Halt. Oh, this I one has a voice. A few simple questions, such as this one: House Indoril holds what cherished institution? That is religion. Most precious. According to House Indoril, must be preserved at all costs. Must. With regard to outsiders, how does House Indoril stand? may visit, but they are always watched carefully. You show a deep and a there we go. Then you get the genealogy. Boop. Next one is House Lalu. Uh, let's see, influence, opportunistic, Dunmer who ignores opportunity, blah blah blah, uh, trade and crafts, uh, and then there's, then it says, seize every chance to make a profit, but remember that your reputation also has a value. Uh, Diplomacy, negotiation, influence and wealth. Alright, let's see. Okay, no voice again. Succeed at business and turn out a tidy profit. Uh, and we're gonna go with compromise. And acknowledge but adapt. Yes. I, I will like to point out, by the way, that you do get infinite tries if you do fail. So you can also just, you know, force your way through it. Uh, let's see. Held the virtues of duty, gravity, and piety most dear. A frivolous soft life is not worth living. The driving goal is to fulfill your duty and maintain your honor. Life is essentially serious and difficult. You must accept and endure the harshness of life. Uh, okay. Oh, he has a verse. Answer the following questions or fail this test. Describe the driving goal of House Redoran. To fulfill your duty and maintain your honor. House Redoran's outlook on life can be summed up as... We, we must accept and endure the harshness of life. House Redoran most strongly believes in the following institution. The way of the warrior. An impressive display. Thank you. Okay, and now when we get this, it's then going to open up the very last one. Which will, of course... After Talvani genealogy, you see flying books in here. There we go, and now we just go back to the uh, Vex City. Okay, and we just return to the library again. You see, the model still has the missing part. Now when we talk to the librarian. Was the library of Andul in the location revealed by our model? And was it filled with ancient knowledge once thought lost? You recovered the lost genealogies of the great houses? Why, these date back to before the war of the First Council. Remarkable! You have done a great service for this library in all of Morrowind, Outlander. Nothing yet. I need to catalog them, study the ancient script, and make suitable translations. But, given time, the great houses will see the value in this project and reward our efforts accordingly. In the meantime, take this with my gratitude. Here you see we get a cuirass of the Defiler and the Warden, uh, 
Mortenfell uh, scale model. And then it pops up in our collection saying Mortenfell scale model. I'm just gonna go to a house real quick. I don't have any house unlocked it seems. Yeah, I'm just gonna find a house real quick and then uh, show it to you. Okay, I just uh, bought the house known as Amaya Lake Lodge, just uh, north of Quebec City. I'm just gonna show you the scale model. Place. Boom. There we go. You can see it is uh, quite a bit smaller than the one inside um, inside the actual library. But it does still have all the, you know, waypoints. You can see right here that's Vivek City. I don't know why the uh, the palace is blue. Over here is uh, uh, what is that one called? Malmora or something. This is uh, Suran. This is uh, what is that one called? It is called Satrith Mora. Up here is Telmora, I think. Bear, could you, like, go away or something? Fat ass is in the way. Come on. Come on, follow. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so... I think it's quite a nice reward. Uh, it's certainly better than a memento, I think. Uh, which is what you got from the Thieves Guild. Uh, I do kind of like the Polymorph um, from the Lithony of Blood. Uh, the... Dark Brotherhood uh, achievement collection, but I don't actually use it that much. So I think this one is definitely a nice reward uh, for sure, and it's uh, very nicely detailed. Anyway, uh, I hope this was helpful, and thanks for watching.